Got it work? Well, it's recording, but it's not streaming. I oh, know. okay. Yeah. But we'll upload it tomorrow. And so people can see, we'll see be able to see it. Yeah. But there must be at least 180 people in this town who are disappointed right there now. May, there may be <laughs> maybe. not watching the parks committee meeting. I I understand that. So we'll <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Welcome to uh City of Sunbury Parks and Recreation Committee meeting for uh, June 7, 2023. It is uh, about 5.33 p.m. Roll call, Amber. Mr. Ghost? Here. Mr. Martin? Here. Mr. Grumney? Here. Uh, minutes from our last meeting were May 3rd, 2023. Um, Mr. Martin and I noticed one correction I think needs to be made in the first paragraph. The last line where it indicates committee member Dave Martin called the meeting to order. I think that was me. Was you. Yeah, um, it would have been Mr. Ghost that meeting. I think Mr. Martin was last meeting, but other than that, I think everything else looked okay with me. Any any other corrections? I'll motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Martin, and I will second discussion. Roll call. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mr. Ghost? Yes. Mr. Grumney? Yes. Three yes. All right. Uh, next item is our visitor section. Uh, I do see a visitor out. I think that might be uh, Mr. Hinkle yep. with Mid-States Recreation. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Do you want to say anything at this point? I'm or... just here if you guys have questions. Okay. Very good. I had communicated via email with Mr. Hinkle uh, this week about uh, uh, some plans he uh, forwarded to us, some examples of some uh, playground equipment that he could potentially help us with. It's been very helpful. I think, Daryl, you were copying in on, on yeah. that communication. Okay, uh, let's go to the unfinished business section. And the first item is our uh, continuing uh, discussion about J.R. Smith Park planning. Um, you'll see in your packet uh, a couple of new revised site plans. There are three here, and they all incorporate uh, the small amphitheater concept. I think Mr. Richard Washington with CT put these together, and I reviewed them earlier this week with him. Um, <clears throat> I like the, I do like the three designs he's put together. Um, one correction, though, I think there's a typo here at the top. There's two types. I saw a type one conceptual on here too. Apparently, landscape architects aren't good at spelling. <laughs> For a site plan, we spelled it S T I E. So I noticed that. Look at that change. Just wanted to make sure that was I wasn't reading that wrong. Um, what was the other conceptual down there on the bottom? It says can so put S instead of C. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, so I don't know, Dan. Have you seen these three exhibits? Yes, sir. Can you offer your comments or well, your thoughts? He uh, he added a small. I mean, I, I don't know. You had a discussion with them, and you, if you review these um, different site exhibits, are really generally the same um, uh, purposes. However, they're laid out differently. There's a small amphitheater with seating on each of them. Uh, he provided a more prominent road connection. Um, uh, to connect to towns, to connect uh, better to the to Cherry Street there. Mm -hmm. um, I like that idea, the more prominent entryway, nice visual, just coming in there off the corner. Shows the splash pad as a ground spray splash pad. Mm -hmm. There's a separate pavilion and restroom splash pad, mechanical room, that, and that's needed for a recirculating water system approach, which I think is the current thought for yes. what be done. And uh, <clears throat> the equipment selections were based on the community comments. There's some pieces in here for older kids as well as a large play plea, large play piece and some inclusive play pieces for um, the same. Yeah. yeah, and we also uh, had a discussion with Mr. Washington about adding a swing. Mm -hmm. uh, That's correct. And with a potential pergola over the top of it. So you'll see that in the new design. I think I like that idea. It's a nice, relaxing mm -hmm. uh, amenity. 
next to the park area there. Um, the splash pad, do you have equipment included on the pad as well or not? I believe that's an entire, that, that uh, cost is for the entire splash pad and equipment associated with it. Yeah, back on page seven of your packet, you'll see a revised cost estimate page based on these revised, these new concepts. Total is 2.3 million. I think the maximum we had was 2.5. That includes contingency there down at the bottom, 15% surveying and construction. 450,000, I think, is set aside for the splash pad system itself. And every other item there is is detailed. Uh, I'm just curious, Mr. Hankel, have you had a chance to look at any of this at all? I think he, I think I seen the three plan, but I haven't seen anything about the splash pad. Okay, so you have seen these three concept plans with the amphitheater. I think they were all in the vicinity of the equipment. Mm -hmm. it out. Okay. Um, yeah, if you could step up to them and just give us your name and address. Your thoughts to this point with well, so Air Depot 8952 East Liberty North Road, which is actually Marengo. My son's mom lives on Hawthorne Road, which is right behind the park. Okay, uh, my biggest thought on the plans from a parks and rec director standpoint from Marysville, my time in Marysville was. Our biggest complaint when people rent the pavilion and amphitheater to have events was the splash pad noise because the water makes mm -hmm. a lot of noise when people are trying to have events. So if you have mm -hmm. a splash pad and then seeing behind the splash pad and the stake on the other side of the splash pad, there may be evenings that people want to come enjoy the splash pad, but then people in the pavilion say, hey, you got to turn it off or request you to turn it off and kind of puts you guys as a city of Sunbury and, you know, between a rock and a hard place because it's like, what do we do and who do we appease, I guess? <laughs> yeah. That was one of our biggest issues and, and our splash pad actually sat off to the side. It wasn't in the middle, but it was still like during our big events, we shut it down. So based on, on that, I could interrupt and interject. This first revised plan here where it shows the pad behind the pavilion and then the amphitheater out front. Yeah. Would probably, that be the most yeah, attractive? Yeah, that'd be the best. Uh, nothing that we put it in the middle of everything. So you're talking example one or A? Yes. And I, I didn't bring those plans with me. But, um, yeah, I think they're labeled here. Let me see. Oh, what's here? Yeah. Yes, concept A. Yeah, I don't even see the, the stage and stuff in concept B. I haven't figured out where it is. I think the idea there was where you see the pavilion is where you would have a, you know, a step or two up on the pavilion. So maybe it sits up a little higher than ground level. And then you've got the, you know, seating walls built into the lawn area there. Um, and then behind the pavilion, you would have the pad. Can you reverse these two and move that up and put the splash right here? Yeah, that's a good question. Or you, uh, Mr. Grundy asked if you could, you know, sort of reverse the splash pad in the playground, but would that be even more <laughs> boisterous? I yeah, guess. You're kind of throwing everything there right together and all of the concepts. Yeah. Like, um, <clears throat> You know, maybe beneficial depending on what you're thinking, and kind of move the playground down a little bit towards the south. I assume. Sort of separate that in the pad yeah. from the from the pavilion. Yeah, it's just a thought. I mean, um, mm -hmm. I, I just know coming from the parks and rec world, outside noise when someone rented something was always a hindrance. So, and that's what we got to base plan. I don't know if you guys are planning on renting it out or doing anything like that, but that can. Cause an issue in the future. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the city wants to get in the turn the splash pad off or reserve this for that and all that stuff. So I right. even even think about moving keeping the playground where it is and moving the splash pad south of the playground and leaving a gap space there um, between yeah. the, the playground and the amphitheater might be 
something to think about too. Maybe some screenings, you know, they're not really tall. You want to be, I think you want to be able to see what's going on mm -hmm. in there, but maybe there's a, there's a way to buffer the noise a little bit yeah. too. If you're going to have an amphitheater, people are going to want to hear what's going on on right. the stage. They, you know, right. there's so many distractions that you'd be looking right at the distractions. Um, and I'm not sure the two can sit next to one another. Yeah. Well, like, you know, my father has it all the time, and I'm starting to do it too, where uh, when you hear those noises off to the side, you want to look that way mm -hmm. instead of looking at what you're trying to focus on. Mm -hmm. So it, it just, it can cause a distraction. And, you know, I thought if you guys give me the chance to comment, just from my previous job in Marysville, I, I know that was a big complaint of ours that, uh, Partners Park, which was our main park up and down there. So, at a, and you know, the splash pad was half the size with just kind of like bubblers in the ground. So, it, it had more younger children instead of older children. So, if you're making a bigger splash pad, you're going to attract more people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great. It's kids screaming and yelling. It's fun, you know, for everybody that's there for that, but not for the people that are there for something else. Go ahead, Mr. Green. No, I was going to say, I mean, thinking about even with that, I think this is great input. And, and uh, even thinking about when we're talking about housing developments and putting in natural buffers, I mean, you can use landscaping even to, to like, if we were to move the splash pad on the other south of the, of the playground area and then on the north side of the playground area using some natural buffers, whether that's, you know, a, a tree line, a bush line or whatever, I guess, to, to help separate and keep that... Uh, yeah, the the idea to begin with was just to have just a small, you know, very small amphitheater presence, just so the adults could be there with the kids, mm -hmm. enjoying something. Um, can it work? Do you think it can still work in some way, shape, or form? Those three amenities together. Yeah, I, I think you know, like the concept A, the concept C, where it's not right in the middle, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Concept C, it looks like it's on the side. I, yeah. was, I was looking at concept B where it's kind of in the middle of everything. I don't think that would be a good look or a good outcome, I guess. I mm -hmm. think it would look good. But, yeah. yeah. So if we provide some uh, some more space and separation there and yeah. maybe some buffering or screening with regard to the noise, right? it could work. Yeah, and it's all based on planning and, and future planning of what you guys see and want out of this park. I mean, if you're never going to have any big type of events where they're both going at the same time, then yeah, I, I don't see any any. I see maybe that some of that happening, but yeah, not a lot of it. I don't think the amphitheater, the intent of the amphitheater, is not for any large entertainment uh, group idea. It's just a small. Small area where you maybe have a, a Dave Martin with his guitar <laughs> um, or something like that. Excellent. On. But um, okay. So if, if, if I could, just a couple other thoughts. I mean, I would be uh, just a little conscious of the line of sight issues, though. I, I do remember in the public forums, um, parents with small children at a playground want to be able to see mm -hmm. right now gotcha. so yeah. screening between the two mm -hmm. you know may not be what they would want to see um mm -hmm. so just maybe that's, yeah i'm, I'm that's talking about point. something low in terms of where you still have the sight lines yeah but yeah maybe it maybe it consumes some of the noise you know and, and the other thing i would say is that to me i i do think that concepts a and b orient the sound for residential units Mm -hmm. um, C is the one that orients it toward the commercial uses. Again, I, it's not that you got a big rock and roll band playing there, but um, you know that just may think that, or just think a little, little bit about whether that would be the better orientation, and then kind of redesign from there. The problem with that, though, is the natural um, terrain probably accommodates A and B more than it does C, because C basically gets you into flat ground. Yeah, I think it lends, the, the terrain yeah. lends itself there to A. Yeah, and, the and, and I, I think that's some of the, I, my recollection was that's feedback we got, maybe it wasn't at the public forum, but it might have been through some other venue, which was with the with the sound of traffic on 36, I guess it's 37, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I do remember some people kind of pushing back that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe this is not the ideal site for a small venue 
where the music isn't loud necessarily because the traffic noise is going to be a bit of an issue. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if I agree with that necessarily, although trucks going through that area starting and stopping can be can be loud around mm -hmm. that corner. Um, so just a couple of other thoughts, I guess, on that. Um, you know, I, maybe the final thing I would say then is, is it the new Albany, not the new Albany, is it the Hilliard model that had the splash pad in between? I feel like it might have, and maybe that's what Richard was kind of reacting to. Because, um, Mr. Chairman, I mean, when you when you, when you sent out some images, I think that's one of those images. Yes, that it was. Yeah. Light. Yes, yeah. it was the Hilliard, Hilliard rendition. So it might be useful to kind of understand how Hilliard does that, then. How do they deal with the noise issue versus the... Okay, that's something we can follow up yeah. on. Okay. I would imagine if we had some kind of an amph amphitheater like this, again, not a big one, that the city may want to actively program, you know, some music in the park kind of sure. thing. Sure, that's what, that's what I had envisioned there. Yeah, that's the question I had was like, if, if we're going to build an amp amphitheater, is it going to be something we use for that? Or is it just going to be a, a site? Because, you know, when I think like Genoa Park, you know, they've got a nice um, pavilion there. Where with a fireplace that you could rent a whole birthday party. So I don't, you know, there's another alternative. You put in a... Uh, a pavilion where people can have picnics and things like that enjoy it or an amphitheater and i don't know which one will get used more but this is a thought the vineyard church has their picnic down at at the alum creek area at the bottom of the dam there and mm -hmm. they have shelter houses and stuff and they have people bring in guitars and do worship music together and stuff like that while the picnic is going on and everything mm -hmm. So I, I kind of anticipate that as a potential for places too, to use for small group get togethers and yeah. that kind of thing. There's still some models of, uh, or some uh, pictures of some uh, pavilions, I think, in one of right. the, in some of the chair. And they're, they're real. I mean, obviously the one you know is very nice, um, but that's kind of like, I mean, I like the idea of an amphitheater. The pavilion thing also kind of is a nice gathering place too, that, uh, you know, families come have a picnic, kids are in the, splash pad or you know family reunion those types of things which again i don't know what somebody's plans are as far as are, are there going to be concerts every saturday night where there's something going on or is it like and, and i'm uh, you know you also just want to be leery that it just doesn't become a, a jungle gym for kids <laughs> you know just to run yeah. up and down and <laughs> yeah you know i could see a you know first or fourth saturday or probably of the month where you have have an event mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a small group there go ahead mr Ingram. You know, another thought too is if you didn't do an amphitheater, you could do a pavilion, and then um, the Marysville, that's the Memorial Pavilion, which is Memorial Health, they donated the money for it. But um, it was just a flat surface. And then when we had Friday night on the Bound of Band and stuff, we had a band riser on a trailer. So it was just the maintenance staff would hook that trailer up, go and put it up. It took an hour to put up, and then the next day they'd come and take it down. Leave it on the trailer until the next event. So then, you kind of get the best of both worlds, where you don't have the kids running up and down the stage. It's still an open pavilion; people can have picnics to launch and all that stuff. And then, when you have your events, you can do the band riser. And then, if you ever wanted to rent the band riser out, you could rent it out for the fee. Make sure you cover your boss and employees, boss of the stage. See, I, I I like that idea because I think yeah. I think of. I think a pavilion gets more community usage. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it is a more of a draw why people would come to a park for the, the shade for an outdoor meal or what have you. So that's just my two cents. But yeah, I mean, that's the idea of the pavilion to begin with was to have an area inside the pavilion for the group. Yeah. And when I say amphitheater, all I'm talking about is just adding some seating mm -hmm. and, and a slope, basically, mm -hmm. for vision. Mm -hmm. sight line but uh yeah i mean i'm with you on the, the pavilion stage bringing in a band riser that's a good idea i haven't thought about that okay and i would just say so i mean if we think about uh and again maybe we're not to the point where we think about all of the uses associated with this but i mean given the fact that there is a such a unique amenity there with the splash pad <laughs> i could imagine a lot of people would want to rent mm -hmm. out that space 
And I, I, I just, I think would caution that maybe that's not what this pavilion is used for mm -hmm. because now people will sort of tie up the, mm -hmm. the pavilion and the, um, and the splash pad in a way that maybe we don't intend or wouldn't want to intend. Just kind of make it a first come, first serve type of thing. Or like, you know, if you show up there with a picnic basket and it's available, great. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because right. if somebody rents out the, the thing, who's going to tell the other people <laughs> right. that yeah. the taxes here, you're not allowed out here today. Yeah, right. man, that could be a cost. I don't want that job. I don't know why you don't see this kind of a range, these three amenities together very often, do you? Yeah. Why is everybody yelling in the mic? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I think. <laughs> but I know, like, you would have found the pavilion that Harkness Park, but it was a significant amount higher than like our other pavilion shutters. And it was like a minimum of three hours. And then it was like more weddings and stuff like that. Or, you know, now it's probably not the, like this probably organizer to print it out and have a whole thing in full part. And they right. Print it out. But, it, it was still something we would have in our bylaws and in our contracts that, hey, we still can't keep the public out of there. Right. We can put the signs up and really honor it, but we still really can't keep everybody out of there. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't, again, I'm just speaking for one person here, but I, I think about Genoa Park. I think about the Westville Park off of the Ottervine Avenue, I think, or what have you. Yeah. And and those are just kind of you show up, it's available. Great, I'm going to put out my spread, and and if not, we're going to eat out of the trunk of the car, but we're still going to enjoy the playground. So I mean, I would be leery of it because again, it's a community park, and if it's rented out every weekend in the summer, that stinks right. because then I can never access it. So yeah, I uh, I can see it just being a community pavilion that's available every day throughout the year. If you're there and it's available, great, use it. But uh, yeah, the one at Genoa Park is big enough. You could have four or five families having yeah. their reunions at the same time. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, huge. it's pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we do have options in two other parks for pavilions anyway. So yeah, yeah. you can kind of push in that direction. For right. Juices. Okay. So if I'm hearing everybody correctly, consensus is we want to move to probably strike the amphitheater and just go with a more beefy pavilion where it's more accessible, more people, and can provide entertainment, right? I, I mean, I think it would get more use I, 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 from the community. I think it would get more use, and I think it would attract families uh, more to the park than amphitheater, which I think has good intentions, but I just can, you know, knowing little kids, that becomes a, a playground. Parents are constantly like, get off of that. <laughs> You know? yeah. So, do you, yeah. do you like the idea of the swing set maybe on each side of the splash pad? Sure, parents can okay. sit there and okay, okay, I, I like that too. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I think based on that, we'll talk to well, uh, Dan, could you talk to Richard sure. and take that feedback to him and 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 redo do some uh, other three renditions without the amphitheater? But I think we want to keep the swings, swings, and we want to keep the uh. The prominent entry, I like that corner concept A, where it's coming off the corner there prominently. Can I ask a really my new question? Yeah. What I've seen in other parts, I think I saw maybe in one of the things, Tim, that you included with it, it has like an a iron gate, like entry walkway. I think that would look really nice mm -hmm. too, coming here, whatever, you know, St. J.R. Smith Park. As yeah. you're walking in the end. And will you like walk a, underneath yeah, it? Yeah. Over yeah. the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like an arborish type of thing or some, something. Some, I don't know. some brick. Yeah, yeah columns nice. there on each side. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Will, will this sidewalk coming down the hill into the park, will it be possible to put handrails on the downhill portion of that? If it if certainly it's possible, I would it, there would be a requirement to make it ADA accessible. Right. And that would probably if it's steep enough slope and require any rails as well. Okay. So, I yeah. just, yeah, it is pretty steep right, right there. And that's why I asked because I know some people struggled getting in and out of the park on Memorial Day after the event a little bit. So, right. Of course, we'd, we'd uh, flush that out at final design to make sure. Right. That, so okay. Great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, Anything else you could add, Mr. Hankel, about uh, the amenities around or included within the playground and the pad itself? We talked about the swing. 
you know of anything any other trending uh, items like that we should think be thinking about i know we got the zip line in here for the older crowd i like that is there anything else like that uh, i mean there's some really cool pieces of equipment out there i think he um, the equipment he sent it was really nice it's really important to have um, the inclusive for your playground especially the start as if you don't do it when you build it and then it's really hard to have it on the next side so um he had some inclusive pieces on there which is nice there's so i don't know how you guys feel about um, that structure but there's a really cool net structure that we offer um it's it's really tall it's like 12 foot tall and it's just gigantic it's really neat where we just put one in um there's a park over that's actually a private park it's a camp for them it's a special needs over here actually and we just put one in there it's Limited. We we were just there. Oh, you're just <laughs> yeah. not at the not the playground, but yeah. uh, keep Daryl off of it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Is all your equipment on your website? Picture, yeah, pictures. Our, uh, I, is it it's it's this has all our offerings because we all the northern this play world, so a lot of the stuff that he picked out play world, but we we run several different lines. So this would have like all of our offerings. One of you guys want this? Just, yeah, give that to Mr. Hennessy. Um, or Dan. Oh, sorry. Or, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I was going to give that to the CT consultants to the neighbor here, but. Um, yeah, that is that's Dan. <laughs> I am, I'm sitting in chair and CT consultant. Oh, okay. So there you go. So, <laughs> uh, Dan. No. Um, yeah, that's what we have. Do you like the swing idea? I'll give it to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Um, I, I kind of picture it like the ones maybe down on the promenade of the side of the line. You guys the yes, I'm very familiar with that. So, that was my job before the city of Marysville. I was our street manager for downtown, so I can mm -hmm. see that whole side of the line project. It's a beautiful uh, strip. I like it, that. It's awesome. So, and, and those swings are really nice. I mean, there are there's upkeep, but there's upkeep to anything. Including playground equipment. So, where are those from? Do you know? Um, I think those were specially designed. I don't think they came from any specific manufacturer. I think they designed those and built those on the Okay. We'll go down there and get some pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? I, I think, think so. <laughs> Okay. Clarifications on the recommendation when you were referring to the entry feature. Are you you speaking at the the drive feature from the roadway? Or are you talking? Yeah, we're, we're like before this flag, but before you get to the flag, I think there's something. So like, okay, yeah, right around that area somewhere. Okay. Like, Not off of the main road, but in, no, in, in no, the like park. walk the walk area Good. where you're entering. Right, I ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. think we want to put. We probably want one there and one down. When I'm looking down, where you pull in with your vehicle now. That's probably too wide of an area, but um, oh, yeah. I guess just the entry points into the park, the walking entry points. We could do a mon some sort of monument at least. At the yeah, a monument sign there. Maybe you have the iron overhead, or that we have the prominent new area at the corner. Brick columns on the side for support. I think you know what we're talking about, right? Okay. I like the idea of brick pavers in that flagpole promenade area. Maybe that's something we could sell, put folks' names on it for, for a price to help offset the cost. Yeah, he does have that in here as a flagpole paver. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Maybe the sidewalk leading up to that is also paver if it's not that long. Or maybe that's concrete. He's priced it as concrete. Okay. Okay. Anything else on J.R. Smith for this meeting? Are, are we going to spend just a, a little bit of time on the on the cost estimate? Yeah, not that we yeah. get to jump into the details of it, but yes. Are you are, are you getting comfortable with with this sort of ballpark range? I, and the reason I ask is because. Um, I know when our earlier ballpark range was somewhere around a million and a half ish. Um, 
Now, you know, we'll take the pavilion stuff out and that, you know, brings it back, whatever, $50,000 or so. Um, but, but do we really need to start scrubbing these numbers a little bit more aggressively? Um, Go ahead, John. No, I was going to say, yeah, I, I think we're probably at a point where, you know, obviously the changes we recommendations we made tonight, I don't think are like major changes, but I, I think the pricing isn't going to change that much on what we talked about tonight. So uh, I think we're probably getting close where, where we should get these as tight as possible and, and get them to probably the full council at some point mm -hmm. here in the near future, just to say, here's what we're, we're kicking around and start getting some momentum on it. That's my thought. I don't, I mean, I open to other suggestions. I think we talked about maybe in the last meeting where Ms. Stefan presented some financing options. I think 2.5 was the max and kind of what we were looking at maximum, and it was still doable based on that number. Right. Um, a lot of that was dependent on if you wanted to add it to the bonding. Yeah. Um, uh, we also have. I also put together some recommendations based on discussion I had today with Rich um, Washington. Oh, okay. CT. Um, I can hand those. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Let's see what you have. Um, mm -hmm. Well, before she jumps into the details of that, but, but what my thought, my comment, I guess, was a little bit more about, you know, think about it, it, two and a half million dollars in this part is going to limit you know, our potential in the other parks. And so, yeah, you know, I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. I mean, mm -hmm. is this is this at that level of priority for you as a committee that you'd want to be on the high end of uh, of the budget? Or, or again, should we be thinking about scrubbing the numbers in a way because we, there's more to be done, you know, at Town Square, for example, um, or there's more to be done at the Reservoir. I mean, I know we've got some plans at the Reservoir. And so. Freedom Park. Yeah, well, and that's a good point exactly. because we do have an issue with the ODNR uh, and the drainage over there now with the reservoir. So we probably should be closer to two mil max, I would think. Yeah, the only, the only thing I, I would caution is that, and, and I just don't want to do something half. You know, I mean, if we're going to, if we're, if the goal is to, um, you know, keep keep the square and the Sunbury like the focal point yeah. and, and the attraction, I don't want to, short chain J.R. Smith Park. So then we can kind of do a little something over here too. And then we kind of got a mixed bag of half done things. I mean, I, cause there's always, you know, then what, what what's next year's plan? Well, next year we're going to focus on that. We don't have to do everything, I guess, all at once, but uh, um, I, I just want to be careful that, and I absolutely, we got to be sensible with our, the budget. And uh, if we can trim some things off, then I'm all for that. But I, I don't want to just say, hey, J.R. Smith is about 60% with what we wanted. And we've also got a nice pavilion out in, in uh, Freedom Park that no one really uses. I, I just, you know, I, I just don't want to, if we're going to do something nice, let's make it nice. And then the next project we tackle, let's make that nice. That's, that's my thing. Okay. Well, I mean, the other the other strategy, and, and that's probably a good segue to, to what Dan is going to talk a little bit about is, um, you know, I mean, we could we could certainly, you know, identify what at the end of the day what you want the park to be. Doesn't mean you do two and a half million dollars in year one. I mean, you may do two million in year one, and then find a way to kind of get that last half million in it mm -hmm. um, over time with some grant funding or whatever. That's, that's that's okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so um, phasing is what I was going to bring up. Uh, I would suggest that we. Do J.R. Smith Park in phases, maybe build the base and then add to it in the following years as more funds and resources become available. Um, the number one option as far as funding goes, and this is my in my conversation with Rich, um, capital projects, the state budget capital projects um, that would be submitted this fall for the 2024 budget. And there's no set limit on how much the state would grant. Um, there's no match required from the local government. And um, it's I'm not sure what the chances are of the city receiving funds through the state budget, but it's uh, it was something that was recommended highly from CT to go after. And so on that point, I mean, you may recall the mayor just earlier this week had commented that uh, there maybe there is a senator who is interested in looking at J.R. Smith Park and providing some support. So that's that would, yeah, that's, that's a good, yeah, and that's right. And, and, and as we were saying, I mean, if we could if we could hone in on the scope and the pricing, 
we'll be in a much better position to be able to ask the senator's assistance and or others. So, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Other ideas um, using the land and water conservation fund through ODNR. That is a maximum project award of five hundred thousand. It's a fifty-fifty match. We could use those funds for playgrounds, parking, shelter, amphitheater, spray parks, meaning splash pad, outdoor game courts, and recreational trails. Everything that J.R. Smith Park wants to have mm -hmm. could be covered. Um, again, 50-50 match, and we would apply for that this November um, and determine to see if um, funding was an option. Now, I did look at the grant, the grant awardees in 2023 for the Land and Water Conservation Fund, and a lot of these grants were for $500,000. Um, just for some example, city of Painesville got to install an amphitheater and they were awarded 500,000, um, Cuyahoga, Brexville, they replaced playground and loop trail and installed a ramp and they were awarded 500,000. And there's about a dozen or half a dozen more examples of similar awards. Okay. okay. Excellent. Also nature works. That's a 75, 25 grant to match program. Um, this would, we would have to wait to apply next year because we've already missed the deadline, but that is something where we could in the future, if we hadn't yet put the full playground in or all of the trail or the shelter house or something, we could um, apply for funds that way and, you know, piecemeal the project in. And, and I get what Mr. Grumney is saying and not wanting to do things halfway. Um, you don't necessarily have to cut corners, but you can just do a little bit at a time, make it look really nice with the intention that you're going to add to it in the future once more funds are there. Yeah, I think based on what I'm hearing that, I think a good strategy could be keep the 2.5 million in the budget, but we plan on it over a three or four year period and we continue to uh, apply for these grants each year. Yeah, it's certainly an option. So I just wanted to throw some of those out for your consideration. Okay. I see some other things on here. Is there anything else on here that you wanted to mention, Dana? Uh, just my phased approach at the bottom. Not the bottom, okay. This is just my idea of what you would want to kind of go step by step. And it's just my um, very rudimentary idea of how you would do this. But you could, um, for example, do the parking and the entrance and the restrooms and then something ex to excite the residents like the splash pad or um the playground and that way you at least have something in the ground a nice park that families can come and enjoy while waiting for the rest of it to be developed phase two put in the splash pad or amphitheater or whatever you didn't put in phase one and you could go with the available funding sources that i have listed out there to fund those and also donations um mr hinkle note no, uh, mentioned that there was a donated uh, amphitheater or uh, Something from the, I forget yeah, what you said it was. Yeah. And I, I get the impression that lots of um, companies want to put their name on things and they often look for places to donate money to put their name on a building. So that's definitely a viable option. With your experience, Mr. Hinkle, on that, how do we approach that? What's the best way to pursue that, pursue donations? I mean, the best one is just local companies first and reaching out to them and give them your idea, your project, and how it's going to benefit the community and see if they want to be a partner. Um, you know, one of the pieces of equipment that we have, and um, they asked us the price for this project we actually had in Marysville. And um, we didn't do it because we had the money already in the budget, but it's got a PMO on it that can actually come off and be customized or whatever you need it to be customized for. So then like, if a company was to donate the money for that piece of equipment, they could have their logo on that band. Um, and that that's kind of a good way of saying, you know, thank you to this company and this piece was donated by so-and-so where it's good advertising for them and they're helping the community as well by giving it donations. So, and it still looks nice. It's, it doesn't like degrade the look and obviously you guys put approve the design before it was ever put on it. And then if it was only for a certain amount of years, then you can always take that panel off and replace it with a blank panel. So, did, did Marysville have a formal donation policy that it was working from? Uh, not really from any of the big businesses, but they were also set up over the summer. They had Scott's and Honda. And yep. Huge businesses. And that's the out there now. So 
Um, but you know, I think we see a few of these smaller businesses being willing to donate stuff. Sure. Let's uh, push that forward for our follow up meeting. Get a strategy together for that, Daryl. Yeah. And then we'll come back in 30 days to talk further about that. Now, have we decided to definitely not include pickleball courts? Because I got the impression last meeting that was still on the table, and I don't see any reference to it anymore. Yeah, we are. We're 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 doing that on the basketball court. We're making them. What's the word? Uh, convert, convert, convertible or. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's another one. I can't, I can't. I got dual purpose, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Multi purpose. Yeah. Am, ambidextrous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I mean, the answer is that we are still including that. It's going to okay. be part of the basketball court renovation and they'll be convertible. No, no, and this may not be even right, but are we able to work with the Chamber of Commerce about donations and maybe getting their input and maybe reaching mm -hmm. out to local businesses and kind of civic association as well? Yeah, and doing some of that work for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think first things first, we got to get the, we got to nail down the conceptual plan and have some nice mm -hmm. you know, visuals to present. Yeah. Oh, I see that happening in maybe next meeting or two. And then, yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like I've got a sense of what we'll do at kind of the working group meeting in between. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, scrubbing these numbers a little bit more, coming back just to, um, coming back a little bit more with the, just the tweaked design, but I don't think we're too far off from yes. where we want to land there. Um, I do know the community that I come from, we did develop a donation policy for our parks program didn't it, I would like to, it was in the yeah it was in the infancy stage so we didn't we, we had developed the policy we hadn't necessarily gotten a lot of donations at that point but I, I do think we want to put something like that yes we do for yeah. sure that's yeah. what we okay very good we got to get rolling here we only got a few more minutes and Mr. Chairman I think the other unless there was a decision made I'm not aware of to uh, preservation parks as well for some assistance with funding yeah that's correct I mentioned that to Mr. Hall um because he's with uh, you all are in communication with them in terms of doing the uh the the, the right the bridge right. um anything happening there mr simpson the, the uh chief landscape park has been on vacation but we're uh attempting to get hold of him and see what we can accomplish see what i think we should do is talk to them and then talk go back to the owners of the car wash mm -hmm. project because they expressed an interest in having the path come through there we can offer up a connection to some of these grant offers to the Ohio Erie Trail and show that visual and tell them we've got, we've talked to Pres Parks and the property owner and they're in, that gives us a greater chance to get that grant. So by all means, yeah, let's, let's pursue that. Okay, um, next item on the list uh, for unfinished business is Cherry Street and Columbus Street Park. Yeah, so I did include in the packet the starting on packet page eight, but really the substance is on nine and ten. Um, all right, so and and it didn't it didn't print particularly well, but but um, but nine is trying to show you where the park assets are. It does not have on this list that that park that we're talking about here at Cherry and um, Columbus, but on the next page. Where it, it, it where this uh, master plan talked about town square, you can see it does show that proposed park on the left hand side of the of the image, and it does actually show it with it says gateway, which uh, Mr. Ghost and I mentioned ever so briefly. Uh, was that the name intended name or whatever? Again, I'm not saying that was the intended name, but um, but you can see that it, at least the one the park was identified in the master plan and. Um, I think what what Mr. Ghost is hoping we might be able to do is just start to think about giving it a name, and once we give it a name, maybe we can really start to I don't know address issues, concerns, whatever, beat yeah. it up, beautify it. Yeah, if you uh, could uh, in between now and the next meeting, uh, I know Mr. Martin, you live right there. If you could take some time, you know, just looking at it. Doing a little research, you too, John, and and to tell me what you think a nice amenity would look 
good in there in the middle of that grassy area it's 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 a pain to maintain i think if we landscape that this was the plan ultimately when we first started this was to eventually add something else in the middle maybe another swing and pergola or maybe that's not the right spot maybe it's a table um or in some chairs but some nice landscape and then a name we have to we, we need a name we have to call that something and then think about mirror mirroring whatever you want to do there over here <laughs> pointing over here at what we're going to have to do here on this corner and, you know the idea is to have the same sort of sitting wall mm -hmm. consistency so you have the two corners here yeah and then maybe we do something similar in the center of that mm -hmm. that we're going to do over here or maybe not but that's something we need to put on the agenda mm -hmm. any initial thoughts mm -hmm. Every time I walk past there, I think I have never seen a person sitting on this wall and we build it that wide so that people could just sit there and chat. And I would love to see that being able to happen. I you think know, it happens we, a lot. Our house would probably go crazy with that many people sitting there <laughs> talking, but. The parades, I, I think, gather mm -hmm. the gatherings and folks do sit on it. Yeah. I've okay. seen that. Yeah, I mean, I again, senior the, pictures and whatever. There's a lot of pictures taken yeah, there yeah. in front of that sign. I mean, would that not be a good? I mean, if we're becoming a biking community too, would that be a good place to have like bike amenities, like bike rack? We talked about that. Yes, there is a bike rack there already. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else for the biking community that would be helpful? I don't know. Like to make that kind of a. It'd be nice to have a, a like a couple little tables so, so yeah. that you know if they want to stop and eat a sandwich while they're on their bike ride or whatever and they have a place yeah, to sit and that's what i'm getting at do you want yeah, a table and i yeah i'd like to see some of that yeah. there okay sit down at ghost park <laughs> <laughs> gateway park <I> <laughs> there's a company that makes cool bike fix-it stations and it's just a it's a tower and it's got two poles out you can put your bike up on there it's got an air pump like a air pump. yeah we have that tag for jr smith Oh, redo true. and then we had that discussion with Mr. Parkinson, remember, mm -hmm. uh, with CT. I originally wanted to do something like that mm -hmm. with the bike rack, but he thought it was a better idea to save that for J.R. Smith. So, you know, because it's part of the it would be next to the trail, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's more of a gathering area, obviously. But so I'll I'll say it out loud, but uh um is is with this park i mean I, I know what you're talking about kind of is it is it really have a site that's suitable for gathering i mean when when the bikers come in they usually come over to the square grab a table sit down mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so we've got a parking lot nearby mm -hmm. okay you know is there is there a, a an ancillary use that could support those who are parking there i don't know the answer to that mm -hmm. i mean I don't, nothing immediately comes to mind so i'm going to say i mean is this a is this a site where a piece of public art would maybe be, you know, more relevant. Yeah, uh, I, I than, love than that. Than idea. What? Say it in public, public, public art, art, some kind of public. I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. know what it yeah, but um, I don't even have an idea. With just a bench, and then you got mostly landscape or, or something. Yeah, exactly. That because um, I mean, there's a lot happening at that corner, yeah. as you know. Um, it's not a real quiet place to sit and right talk. right no um some nice curb appeal is what you're talking about yeah something, yeah, something that's that, again kind of signals yeah, to yeah. the that's nothing made somebody coming to the town hey there's i don't know they value public art or what i don't know it's something like that but it's uh, a great idea um because <laughs> there can be other sources for getting public art money so mm. yeah. there's always room to carve out a davy crockett or something to put right <laughs> well <there>. yeah <laughs> you know i mean uh yeah sure <laughs> Okay, um, so give that some thought Johnny Apples for the next meeting, and then let's see. Um, we need to keep moving forward here. A couple more items. I wonder. We do have to get to the Independence Day celebration special event permit. Mr. Hennessy or Amber, you want to talk about? Yeah. That? So, so this one again is just the the decision making matrix that's been set up by the events committee. You're going to have uh, a use for one of the city parks that's going to consume the entire day, and so we just want to make sure the parks committee is aware of the event uh, we have taken this to the events committee and obviously they're supportive of it um, there's nothing here that's uh from the event organizers so that that's that's uh, significantly different than what's been proposed in the past so you'd have the chamber of commerce with a, an event on the square throughout the day uh, a celebration of events for them um, 
And then you would layer on top of that the civic association helping to organize the community parade. And then there would be the uh, the fireworks that evening. We talked a little bit about the fireworks at the at the council meeting. So do you need our parade official? route the same as it's been in the past? So we, we, we no changes to the parade route. <laughs> um, we we have, you know, that's an item that the events committee, you know, it will be taking up, but they agree that this year was too quick, um, you know, to make any kind of changes to parade routes. Right. So, yeah. I, I think we've we've started with uh, race routes as maybe the uh, the first place to start with recommendations, but um, parade routes are, are going to be a bit more challenging to, to alter. So do you need official guidance from us or anything from us? This All we're asking for is that you no, no objections from the committee to uh, to the use of the parks for that park any, for that purpose on that day. Any objections? No. No objections. Not for me. All right. Okay. Let's go down to other park updates. Fallen Hero Trail. I've uh, seen that. I walked it. Um, looks pretty good. Yeah. It just, uh -huh. you know, if you haven't seen it, uh, they're about ready to put the pavement in. We'll have a council action for later this evening to uh, um, finish up phase four, which connects you back to Sunbury Meadows. Um, so they're making great progress on that. And uh, yeah. Dan, can you tell us if CT's been out to inspect yet yeah. and what, what the scope of their inspections have been? We have been out to inspect. The scope of inspection has been, you know, the typical grading uh, thickness of uh, material, compaction, that sort of stuff, which will be the same as we um, they are intending to pave on Saturday, and we'll be there inspecting that as well. Are you satisfied with the routing? Yes, sir. Any any issues? Water runoff problems. I, I have not. Um, I'll look at it tomorrow to, to verify that, though. I, now that it's in the state, it is so close to paving. I drove by there a day, but I didn't have time to stop. Okay. And did they plan to? I know we did the change order for phase four. How soon do they plan to complete that as well? Well, pending council approval this evening, they'll do that at the same time. They'll pave the paving for too. Okay. Very good. Um, we did do a couple of storm or uh, wastewater uh, um, manhole improvements in and around that area as well. So that's right. We've got the ancillary benefits of uh, tore a few things out and covered a few things up. Is that yeah, right? So we're going to hopefully reduce the uh, infiltration into our storm into our wastewater system. Okay, very good. Um, let's go to uh, Reservoir Park update. Uh, the drawdown plan and meeting with ODNR. Did you have that? I uh, had a, a conversation with ODNR. Um, this sort of falls between service and parks and rec. The conversation with ODNR is related to uh, the requirement to this dams and reservoir safety program. Because it is a regulated dam, there's a requirement to be able to draw it down within a certain period of time. Um, and in order to do that, <clears throat> there's some uh, significant uh, improvements that need to be made, adding additional spillways, those gate, gate structures, um, and an outlet structure, plug some pipes that were used for influent in the past, and uh, some some other ancillary issues. Um, and that we're weighing the weighing doing that versus an, a, a different option, which may be allow us to make it exempt from those regulations. And I'm uh, putting together some concepts now, putting some pricing on it, so that we can decide how to do that, which will affect. The final design for the reservoir park improvements. There's a there, regardless of what we do with the dams themselves, we do have to put an outlet feature in to take the water that drains from the reservoirs over to Otis Street to the storm sewer system. It currently drains through the area where the parking lot is, and there's some large concrete underground features that need to be removed. And there's a spaghetti, a whole spaghetti uh, issue of pipes and stuff in that area that really complicate things and need to be uh, cleaned up. So, so no action tonight. I guess the point is, I think we we thought we were going to be able to do it through a piping um, a solution. It sounds like there may be other alternatives. So we're continuing to work through those, and we'll be back to you and the services committee with a recommendation later. It comes out of both budgets, I believe, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, I'm, well, sure, we'll find the resources where we need to, for sure. Okay. All right, we got one more item here. Actually, two more quick items, a couple minutes left. Uh, Freedom Park, parking and disc golf. I know we had that cleared. Saw some pictures. Looks like that's are we satisfied with the result? 
Uh, I think so. I was out there to observe what was happening with the disc golf tournament. It was very, very well attended, um, and the parking seemed to work great. Of course, you know, it's pretty dry out there, so now would be a good time for that. But I mean, we still have to add some uh, um, some road. Um, what am I trying to say? Not clippings. Road. Um, Anyway, what millings. millings? Millings, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Road millings out there. We'll do that as part of the street program. We we'll try to take those road millings out there. It may not be the final, final piece of it, but it'll. Did you uh, talk to them about the the driveway back to. I, I did, and uh, and and they weren't able to make any. I mean, they could they could run run over it, but it wasn't going to alter it in any meaningful yeah, it way. Needs so to be ground. Yeah, it yeah. does. It does. So well, we need to know. That's that. something we need to be looking at. I yeah. think. Yeah, I drove back there yesterday to just see what it looked like back there, and what they did in the back looks good, yeah. but the drive back there is still pretty exciting. <laughs> All right, okay, thank you. One, one last item: with the wrap up a review of the uh, J.R. Smith Park Memorial Day services and the fishing derby. Amber or Daryl, do you have a report? For the fishing derby uh, flyers on the back, just so you know. Uh, not this weekend, but next weekend for that. Um, if you're under 16 and you get there early, get a free fishing pole. So um, that's fantastic. And we've ever, I think I've seen this out on social media. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. good to go there, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then um, yeah. Memorial Day the uh, play service. Um, <laughs> with our, our bleachers arrived. We did have a little bit of a hiccup in the morning, but we took care of that. Um, I think the, the veterans were happy with the... Uh, with the well assistance, were you there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was well turned it well done. Yeah, um, thought the microphone could have been a little louder. Yeah, <laughs> they, I could have provided a mic stand for them if they need it, but yeah. in the future, okay. Yeah, yeah, but the well, that's good feedback. We the bleachers were great, uh, and there plenty, plenty of room. Yeah, plenty of room. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and that was a pretty cool op. Or thing, they, yeah. the way they folded up and all was just one trailer. Right? Yeah. it was really something. Yeah. And it held a lot of people. There was plenty of room still available. So I didn't notice their tag expired in May, though. So they better hurry up and get Oh, ready. I didn't notice that. That's good to know. So. Okay. Well, um, I think, and we we tried to get a. I think on their schedule again for next year. So. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, um, thanks again. It, it, yep. it looked having there in the past. It, it looked very much similar to what it's been in the years past. So it was very well done. Good. All right, very good. Uh, we have nothing else on the agenda. Any other finished or unfinished business? Motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. Second. Second by Mr. Grumney. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Ghost? Yes. Mr. Grumney? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Three yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. Cool beans.